Hey guys, my name is Rizky and you're watching a Creative Own channel. It's been two months since I moved to Sony and so far I've shot about 16 to 17 projects with it. In this video, I'm actually going to highlight the pros and cons that I have experienced so far. The reason why I decided to move to Sony is the fact that at a creative art, we actually shoot both photos and videos. We are using the cons of photos while we are using Panasonic for videos. We're hoping to simplify our gears and actually to scale down the numbers of uh, gears and lenses that we have. It's actually pretty nice to see how Sony actually break down uh, their camera lines. Our series is always for high-res photos. The S series is always for uh, video, while the 7 series or whatever in between is actually for uh, multi-purpose. And of course, the main challenge is budget. My budget is more towards the A7R kind of rig, but then instead of buying an A7R, I actually decided to buy uh, two cameras. I shoot mainly events and corporates. So I'm hoping that the A7 II will be actually my main event camera, while the A7R will actually be my studio camera. I will never dare to shoot uh, a professional projects with a gear that I never used before. I think it was during the Ramadan period, uh, so uh, I happened to stay around uh, Gelang Sura area, whereby actually there are a lot of uh, Pasar Malam there. Uh, so I decided to just simply walk around there, bring one camera and one lens and just shoot it out to actually experience the camera and practice with the camera. I'm going to start with the plus point. The thing that I love about the camera is the fact that this is really light, can actually shoot all day and it's actually less tiring compared to my old DSLR. Most of the time I will shoot like this, whereby I have the camera with a trigger and I have an off-camera flash and I will use my Gorilla Pod like this and so by doing this I can actually point the flash as whichever angle I need. Okay, the camera is really light. I can actually do this all day, no issue. So imagine if you are, have a, a DSLR, a huge ass DSLR on your right hand. By the time, by the end of the day, it's, it's actually quite painful. I just had a problem of having a, a big DSLR like this. It's actually quite uh, taxing on this part of your hand. Okay. So last time I, I actually tend to support it like this. Okay. But by doing so, it actually limits the angle of my flash. Okay. So by doing this, I can actually hold the camera with one hand, no issue. So I think it's a big plus for me. And this is probably one of the main reasons why changing to Sony it's actually a good idea. The thing is actually the fact that I can actually use uh, the live view. Quite a challenging thing to do when you are using DSLR and a few founders in front of your eyes. And of course, I'm wearing glasses, so it's even more challenging. Okay, having the live view, I can actually take a low angle shots. Just simply doing this, like this. Having this flexibility, it actually allows me, or probably inspired me, to actually shoot different angles that I don't normally shoot. The thing that I like is the fact that it has actually a micro USB port here. This may not be a big deal for most of you guys, but I think it's it's quite a handy thing to have. To charge your phone and your camera with the same charger. In my opinion, the camera looks uh, really good. It looks really pretty and uh, Sony really knows how to make the their products looks expensive. A lot of people actually complain about overheating. I, I didn't experience this at all. I shot many conferences, festival, banquet event, uh, studio, and outdoor. So so far, I don't have any problems with it. When I was shooting outdoor, I was I was really scared that the camera would die on me, and I actually brought my Nikon as a backup. But it didn't happen. So I, I was I was really pleased with that. Uh, one of a fellow photographer that I met on events told me that I think it doesn't overheat because you are using the battery grip which I think it's, it's a good one. Probably uh, the fact that I'm using a battery grip, it actually helps. And a lot of people actually complain about uh, 
the battery life. My old Nutrients battery, the big one, can actually last me the whole events 8 hours without changing any battery. Sure, but it was huge and it was expensive. Personally, the battery is actually pretty small and it's, it's fairly cheap. I think it's about half price of the Nikon batteries. My full day of events, which is about 8 to 10 hours, I spend about 3 to 4 batteries and the 800 takes me 2 batteries. Yes, the battery life is definitely uh, not as, as good as uh, Nikon or probably other DSLRs, but this is like about half price, so you just need to buy more batteries. So of course, there are a few uh, negative points that I would like to highlight. The thing that I am quite worried about using Sony is the fact that I am not sure about the reliability in the long run. For example, I've been using the 610 for years and years and years and it still works well. Uh, I think I have about 120,000 shutter count on it and it still runs really well. My old D700 last me, uh, it had 300,000 shutter count and it still runs well. This, uh, I know that all parts are pretty much electronics rather than mechanical so I'm not sure how reliable it is in the long run. Um, I have actually one complaint about this, I am not sure whether it's only for mine. The rubber came off pretty fast, uh, it's only about two months and uh, it's only already started to peel off. So probably the fact that I, I shoot in a different temperature back to back causes this. Or probably I just like mishandled it or something, I'm not sure. The positions of the play button, which is the preview button, is actually at the bottom here. Okay. Instead on my Nikon, it was actually on top. So the problem with this, like if I am holding the camera with one hand like this, I, I find this quite awkward. Okay, and I feel like the camera is going to drop on me. The camera is only being held with my Three fingers. Okay, so there's nothing to hold the camera in positions when I actually jump my thumb to press the play button. What I did was I put in the battery grip and that's it. I don't have any issues with the balance anymore. Last thing that I would like to mention, which I, to me it's actually a negative point, lenses are expensive. It's pretty hard to compare prices of lenses because there are so many different variations. But what I do is I compare three different types of lenses which I normally would have on my collections of lenses which I actually need. The cheapest prime lens, the standard zoom range and the standard tele. Nikon 50mm f1.8G it's about $200 while Sony 50mm 1.8 FE is about $260. So the next thing to compare is a standard zoom lens. Uh, I think Nikon has a better standard zoom lens in terms of affordable standard zoom lens which is a 24-120. I think it's a really good lens for the price and I actually use it a lot if I have a, an event whereby I need to uh, run around a lot. Like the, uh, the coffee Sunday that uh, we always shoot with Anathe Productions. So typically, I will just bring one prime lens and a 24 For Sony, it has 24-70 Zeiss F4. The Nikon lens price at about $600, while uh, Sony lens is about $1,000 plus. Lastly is the 70-200 F2.8. On Nikon, it's about $1,006 while well, Sony it's about 2005. Lastly, which I think this is the biggest problem about the camera, is actually the buffer refresher rate. After you take a shot and you want to do something else like adjusting ISO whatsoever, it takes a bit of time and before you can actually before you can actually take the next shots. If you're shooting spots this may not be the best camera for you. Maybe in the next generations, even after the A9s, they can actually fix this problem and make the camera perform even better. Beside all the problems, I think it's a really good camera. The working photographers out there, I don't think there is an issue for you to move to Sony. Image quality is really high. 
if you shoot raw, which I believe most of you guys are, the raw files came out from the camera are really robust. Uh, I can save a lot of highlights and shadows. So that's all for me today. I hope you find this to be useful. What do you think about the pro and cons of uh, Sony or other mirrorless cameras? Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.